Hi, welcome to Meditating the Word. I'm so glad you've joined us on our journey through the Bible in a year. If you'd like a roadmap of where we've been and where we're going, you can download a copy of the reading plan from blueletterbible.com. You'll find a link in the notes. The translation I'm reading from is the World English Bible, but feel free to follow along in your favorite translation. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, why not do that now? Just click on subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. This is day 137. Today we're reading 2 Samuel 16 through 18. The Second Book of Samuel, chapters 16 through 18. When David was a little past the top, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of donkeys saddled, and on them two hundred loaves of bread, and one hundred clusters of raisins, and one hundred summer fruits, and a container of wine. The king said to Ziba, What do you mean by these? Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit are for the young men to eat, and the wine that those who are faint in the wilderness may drink. The king said, Where is your master's son? Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is staying in Jerusalem, for he said, Today the house of Israel will restore me the kingdom of my father. Then the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. Ziba said, I bow down. Let me find favor in your sight, my lord, O king. When King David came to Bahurim, behold, a man of the family of Saul's house came out, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came out and cursed as he came. He cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Shimei said when he cursed, Be gone, be gone, you man of blood and wicked fellow. The Lord has returned on you all the blood of Saul's house in whose place you have reigned. The Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son. Behold, you are caught by your own mischief, because you are a man of blood. Then Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Please, let me go over and take off his head. The king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? Because he curses, and because the Lord has said to him, Curse David. Who then shall say, Why have you done so? David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, who came out of my bowels, seeks my life. How much more this Benjamite now? Leave him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has invited him. It may be that the Lord will look on the wrong done to me, and that the Lord will repay me good for the cursing of me today. So David and his men went by the way, and Shimei went along on the hillside opposite him, and cursed as he went, threw stones at him, and threw dust. The king and all the people who were with him arrived weary, and he refreshed himself there. Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. When Hushai the archite, David's friend, had come to Absalom, Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your kindness to your friend? Why didn't you go with your friend? Hushai said to Absalom, No, but whomever the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel have chosen, I will be his, and I will stay with him. Again, whom should I serve? Shouldn't I serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in your father's presence? So I will be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give your counsel, what shall we do? 
Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines that he has left to keep the house. Then all Israel will hear that you are abhorred by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So they spread a tent for Absalom on the top of the house, and Absalom went in to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. The counsel of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was as if a man inquired at the inner sanctuary of God. All the counsel of Ahithophel was like this, both with David and with Absalom. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Let me now choose twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue after David tonight. I will come on him while he is weary and exhausted, and will make him afraid. All the people who are with him will flee. I will strike the king only, and I will bring back all the people to you. The man whom you seek is as if all returned. All the people shall be in peace. The saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Now call Hushai the archite also, and let's hear likewise what he says. When Hushai had come to Absalom, Absalom spoke to him, saying, Ahithophel has spoken like this. Shall we do what he says? If not, speak up. Hushai said to Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel has given this time is not good. Hushai said, moreover, You know your father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are fierce in their minds, like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. Your father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is now hidden in some pit or in some other place. It will happen when some of them have fallen at the first that whoever hears it will say, There is a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. Even he who is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, will utterly melt, for all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and those who are with him are valiant men. But I counsel that all Israel be gathered together to you, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that you go to battle in your own person. So we will come on him in some place where he will be found, and we will light on him as the dew falls on the ground. Then we will not leave so much as one of him and all of the men who are with him. Moreover, if he has gone into a city, then all Israel will bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river until there isn't one small stone found there. Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel, for the Lord had ordained to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil on Absalom. Then Hushai said to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, Ahithophel counseled Absalom and the elders of Israel that way, and I have counseled this way. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Don't lodge tonight at the fords of the wilderness, but by all means pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people who are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz were staying by Enrogel, and a female servant used to go and report to them. And they went and told King David, for they couldn't risk being seen coming into the city. But a boy saw them and told Absalom. Then they both went away quickly and came to the house of a man in Bahurim, who had a well in his court, and they went down there. The woman took and spread the covering over the well's mouth, and spread out crushed grain on it, and nothing was known. Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, and they said, Where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan? The woman said to them, They have gone over the brook of water. When they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. After they had departed, they came up out of the well and went and told King David. 
And they said to David, Arise, and pass quickly over the water, for thus has Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose, and all the people who were with him, and they passed over the Jordan. By the morning light there lacked not one of them who had not gone over the Jordan. When Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey, arose, and went home to his city, set his house in order, and hanged himself, and he died, and was buried in the tomb of his father. Then David came to Mahanaim. Absalom passed over the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. Absalom set Amasa over the army instead of Joab. Now Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Ethra the Israelite, who went in to Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zeruiah, Joab's mother. Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. When David had come to Mahanaim, Shobi, the son of Nahash of Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, and Makir, the son of Amiel of Lodabar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite of Rogalim, brought beds, basins, earthen vessels, wheat, barley, meal, parched grain, beans, lentils, roasted grain, honey, butter, sheep, and cheese of the herd for David and for the people who were with him to eat. For they said, The people are hungry, weary, and thirsty in the wilderness. David counted the people who were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. David sent the people out, a third part under the hand of Joab, and a third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Etai the Gittite. The king said to the people, I will also surely go out with you myself. But the people said, You shall not go out, for if we flee away, they will not care for us, neither if half of us die will they care for us, but you are worth ten thousand of us. Therefore now it is better that you are ready to help us out of the city. The king said to them, I will do what seems best to you. The king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by hundreds and by thousands. The king commanded Joab and Abishai and Etai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. All the people heard when the king commanded all the captains concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel and the battle was in the forest of Ephraim. The people of Israel were struck there before David's servants, and there was a great slaughter there that day of twenty thousand men, for the battle was there spread over the surface of all the country, and the forest devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Absalom happened to meet David's servants. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was hanging between the sky and the earth, and the mule that was under him went on. A certain man saw it and told Joab, and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak. Joab said to the man who told him, Behold, you saw it, and why didn't you strike him there to the ground? I would have given you ten pieces of silver, and a sash. The man said to Joab, Though I should receive a thousand pieces of silver in my hand, I still wouldn't stretch out my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king commanded you and Abishai and Etai, saying, Beware that no one touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, if I had dealt falsely against his life, and there is no matter hidden from the king, then you yourself would have set yourself against me. Then Joab said, I'm not going to wait like this with you. He took three darts in his hand and thrust them through Absalom's heart while he was still alive in the middle of the oak. Ten young men who bore Joab's armor surrounded and struck Absalom and killed him. Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel 
for Joab held the people back. They took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the forest and raised over him a very great heap of stones. Then all Israel fled, each to his own tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself the pillar which is in the king's valley, for he said, I have no son to keep my name in memory. He called the pillar after his own name. It is called Absalom's Monument to this day. Then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said, Let me now run and carry the king news of how the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. Joab said to him, You must not be the bearer of news today, but you must carry news another day. But today you must carry no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed himself to Joab and ran. Then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said yet again to Joab, But come what may, let me also run after the Cushite. Joab said, Why do you want to run, my son, since you will have no reward for the news? But come what may, he said, I will run. He said to him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain, and outran the Cushite. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof of the gate to the wall, and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running alone. The watchman shouted and told the king. The king said, If he is alone, there is news in his mouth. He came closer and closer. The watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the gatekeeper and said, Behold, a man running alone. The king said, He also brings news. The watchman said, I think the running of the first one is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. The king said, He is a good man and comes with good news. Ahimaaz called and said to the king, All is well. He bowed himself before the king with his face to the earth and said, Blessed is the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who lifted up their hand against my lord, the king. The king said, Is it well with a young man, Absalom? Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, even me to your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I don't know what it was. The king said, Come and stand here. He came and stood still. Behold, the Cushite came. The Cushite said, Good news for my lord the king, for the Lord has avenged you today of all those who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with a young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up against you to do harm be as that young man is. The king was much moved and went up to the room over the gate and wept. As he went, he said, My son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, I wish I had died instead of you. Absalom, my son, my son. Father God, the mercy of David. We saw it with Saul, who was David's enemy. Yet, David still treated him with respect and wouldn't strike him. And we see it with his son Absalom, who conspired against his father to take the throne of Israel. Yet, we know that the love David showed pales in comparison to your love for us. We rebelled against you. We try to take your throne and be the Lord of our own lives. Yet, you love us still. Enough to send Jesus to die for us so that we can live. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Amen. You can find Meditating the Word on your favorite podcast platform on YouTube and on Facebook. If you're listening to this on one of the many podcast platforms, 
You'll find links in the notes to all of our other locations. It's my goal to encourage others to strengthen their Christian walk through daily reading God's Word. You can help by sharing this podcast and by rating and reviewing it. I want to thank you for joining me and know that I'm praying for you as we journey through the Bible together. Please pray for me and for each other. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing. 